Avatar The Last Airbender is rich with deep lore, subtle character development, and world building. Here are six things you might have missed. Number six, Moonlight Kiss. It's a beautiful moon. Yeah, it really is. Look, I know you're just trying to help, but I can take care of myself. I know you can. Then why are you acting so overprotective? It's so hard to lose someone you care about. Something happened at the North Pole and I couldn't protect someone. I don't want anything like that to ever happen again. I lost someone I cared about. He didn't die, he just went away. I only had a few days to get to know him, but he was smart and brave and funny. Who is this guy? Is he taller than me? No, he's about your height. Is he better looking? It is, you stupid. Oh. I can't. I'm sorry. Ever wonder exactly why Sokka refused to kiss Suki? You might think that it's because he's not over his last girlfriend, Yue. She's gone. And you'd probably be right. But did you ever notice that technically Yue is in this scene? That's right. Technically, Yue is right there. Back in the Book 1 finale, when General Zhao destroyed the Moon Spirit, Princess Yue had no choice but to take its place and effectively become the Moon. Goodbye, Sokka. I'll always be with you. which means she would be right here watching over Sokka and Suki as they kissed in the moonlight. No wonder Sokka's uncomfortable. Maybe stick to the daylight kisses for now. Number five, the lion turtle. A lion turtle. When we first saw this scene, we'll admit that the giant lion turtle with the ability to unlock new bending abilities for the avatar seemed a bit out of the blue. But if you were really paying attention, you might have recognized this lion turtle, because it's not the first time it's appeared in the series. Hey, look at these weird lion turtle things. This book was found in the Knowledge Spirits Library, among troves of ancient history. And we learn later from the legend of Korra that the lion turtles were a major part of the ancient origins of the Avatar. The lion turtle. May the element of fire protect you against the spirits. So it seems like the creators did have a plan for the lion turtles from the very beginning. Number four, the Fire Navy ship. One of the most impactful episodes of the series is the Puppet Master. It's where we first learn about bloodbending and its dark origins. <laughs> but when the titular puppet master, Hama, explains her past and what drove her to seek revenge on the Fire Nation, there was an impressive bit of continuity you might have missed. We did our best to hold them off, but our numbers dwindled as the raids continued. It's easy to miss, but we see Hama and the other waterbenders use their abilities to immobilize one of the Fire Navy ships before ultimately failing to hold them off. Now, if you look back at the first episode of the series, Aang and Katara explore the ruins of that exact ship. Whoa, what is that? A Fire Navy ship and a very bad memory for my people. Not only does Aang see firsthand the result of the carnage in Hama's story, but he also saw evidence of her resistance attempt. Number three, Space Earth. Ooh, that reminds me. Toph, I thought you might like this, since you probably never had a chance to bend Space Earth before. Sweet! Check this out. Okay, this one's a little bit lighter but take a closer look at the Space Earth as Toph bends it. Anything look familiar? That's because for a second, its shape becomes an exact match of the classic Nickelodeon logo. That's some brand aware Space Earth. You know, I don't think there's such a thing as Space Earth. If it's from space, then it's not really Earth. Must you ruin everything? Number two, the wanted posters. This is bad. 
I think we better keep moving. I have to learn firebending at some point, and this could be my only chance to watch a Masters up close. I guess we could go check it out. What? You want to walk into a Fire Nation town when they're all fired up with all their, you know, fire? We'll wear disguises, and if it looks like trouble, we'll leave. Yeah, because we always leave before we get into trouble. Okay, so they obviously want us to notice this wanted poster of Jung Jung, the man who later in the episode tries to teach Aang to firebend. But fire will spread and destroy everything in its path if one does not have the will to control it. But take a look at the wanted poster on the left, a little less noticeable but still significant. That's a drawing of Che, the man who rescues Team Avatar and brings them to Jong Jong. I think it's time to go. Follow me. I can get you out of here. There they are! And if you look even closer, a wanted poster for the Blue Spirit, who just a few episodes earlier freed the Avatar from General Zhao, just before we learned he was Prince Zuko in disguise. So this post is actually full of wanted firebenders. Number one, Ying, Than, and Hope. She sounds healthy. She's beautiful. It's so squishy looking. What should we name her? I want our daughter's name to be unique. I want it to mean something. I've been going through a really hard time lately. But you've made me hopeful again. I know what I want to name our baby now. Hope. That's a perfect name. Hope. You remember when the Avatar helped Ying and her husband Than make their way through Serpent's Pass to reach the safety of Ba Sing Se? But did you know that this actually wasn't their first appearance? In Zuko alone, they're the same couple that Zuko considers stealing from. Before thinking twice when he notices Ying is pregnant. At least Zuko has a conscience. Ying Than and their new baby Hope are also seen a number of times after their passage to Ba Sing Se. They would cross paths with Zuko once more in the episode The Drill, where we see they did find safety in Ba Sing Se. What a handsome baby. <laughs> Thank you. And lastly, in The Awakening, the new parents are seen embracing a crying baby Hope as the Fire Nation soldiers overtake the city. Armies of the Fire Nation surged through the wall and swarmed over Ba Sing Se, securing our victory! <laughs> Truly heart-wrenching. With so many references, callbacks, and Easter eggs, it's easy to miss some of these finer details. But it's that attention to detail the creators put into the show that makes it feel like such a rich and lived-in world. Wow, this is amazing to watch. Kind of makes you realize how insignificant we are. 